Oh, the Michelin Guide. That's right, the tire company, giving you advice on where to go eat. Probably one of the most pristine, but also most hated guides all around the world. Today we're in Kuala Lumpur. We're gonna see how the KL Guide holds up. We're gonna start at local places. We're gonna work our way up to places, well, they require a dress code, so we're gonna have to change out of this a little bit and truly see if you should even listen to the guide. Y'all, we done made the trek down here to Brickfields, AKA Little India, and now we ain't doing the banana leaf rice yet. I'm gonna throw you for a loop. We going for some Paranak and cuisine. That's right, we got Hanak Baba right here, open since 2018 only, pumping out some delicious delicacies. So we gotta get in here and try it for ourselves. Oh, the vibe right away on the outside kind of reminds me of Malacca, but it also gives me like that Kopitiam vibe from this part of the world. And it's here, we over ordered as always. But before we dig in, first just a thing about Nonya food. Indo-Malay flavors with Chinese influence. If you had to ask me, Max, what is one of your favorite sub-genres of a country's cuisine? Nonya food would probably be one of my top five. So I guess we gotta start with the appetizer right here, the Pai Di. Thin, crispy flour shells, ultra crispy, right? Inside they should have stuff with jicama. Can kind of vary, but usually like carrot, little shrimp, and there you see that sliced and slivered cucumber, as well as something nice and crunchy on the top, which looks like fried shallots. Oh yeah. Now you may, should use chopsticks, but I'm gonna go hands in here. Jicama is one of those things I feel like I should always eat more and more. That earthiness, that subtle sweetness melt in your mouth, mixed with that crunchy, shattering top half. I've never had it with actual egg slices either. I don't mind it. I do wish I had like some prawn or something in here. So next up we got fried chicken. Now I've had a lot of laksa and I've had a lot of fried chicken in my life, but never have I ever had them together. So first for me. You can see that little tint of color, right? Because it's ayam goreng kunyit. Kunyit is like the turmeric. Chicken's been marinated in that turmeric batter and then fried up. Now we got some chili sauce, which I do believe we can eat with it, but let's go and pay the respects first. We're gonna go in raw. That is superb fried chicken. Everything you want, coming off that drum piece right there. It's got a real fatty piece of meat. Not only that, still got that crispy crunchiness on the outside with no batter, but it's the turmeric that makes it so unique. The way that turmeric has that touch of bitterness to round out the whole experience and then that floralness to fill the mouth. That is a legendary move. Now you wouldn't do it any other way with your ramen or anything like that? Pay your respects to the laksa. Floral, fatty, heavy, coconut, a little spice that tingles. I could use more heat, but to me what I love is the floral component coming from this. Go ahead and let those touch heaven because we blessed to be eating this today. I cannot get over the floralness of that. That laksa paste they're using is so fresh. So many aromatic ingredients in that. To me, it's a lot of garlic, shallot, lemongrass, something, something like that in there. I mean, it is just a treat for your taste buds. You could put that right there all over my sandal and I would eat it. Double noodle action. You got little tofu puffs here, which are just flavor sponges. Round it out with fish cakes, sockles, and bronze. I mean, shoot, I think you could just even dip your fried chicken in here. And before you know it, it's all gone. Hook an IV up to me. Give me this and an IV bag. Put it right here. Thanks, Thank boss. You. Now, you can't come to Malaysia and not have some Chinese chicken, but this actually seems like the Malay community is making it, and that is purely interesting. Now, they knew I was coming. Look at this. You should see this spot. We got the chef's table. You don't understand. When you go to sushi and stuff like that, people pay high dollar, and I got it for free right now. Well, kind of free. It didn't cost any extra. Let's put it that way. I mean, 
I don't try to get hit in the face, but if I was gonna get hit in the face, that's how I'd wanna get hit in the face, with a plate of Heine's chicken and rice. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Why wow, this looks good. I could have got some. Life is much more beautiful when you have a table full of food. I forgot I ordered this. Yeah. They got this beautiful chicken here. I do believe they do two types. They'll do a free range and then another type of chicken. We got the other chicken. It should be nice and juicy. The free range is what I didn't want because it's gonna be leaner and tougher. It looks like a big mound of chicken, right? It's perched up on some cucumber. Now you know I'm the sauce boss, but it would be a criminal act to not try this by itself first. Soft, tender, not really melt in your mouth. It still has like a little bit of just meaty, dry, hearty protein. But to me, it's all about that skin. It doesn't really have that gelatinous layer that I've had with other Heine chickens as well. So it is a little bit just drier than I thought it'd be, but it's still nice and tender and just fall apart. But some people would argue that the rice is the most important part, so we gotta try that. A little sniffy sniff. The savior right here, that chili sauce. And what's kind of crazy is the chicken rice may not be the best thing here. This mango salad looks irresistibly tempting. The mango ikambilis, which are those anchovies, the peanut, the green chili, a little shallot. It's sweet, it's heat, it's tart, kind of like an unripened fruit green tartness. That fishiness coming from that Econ Billis, different textures. I'm just curious why they love faking you out and perching things up on cucumber and slices of iceberg lettuce here. Finally had to get a vegetable in sometime in a food tour in Malaysia. No better way than get this stir fried and some shrimp paste right here. Gotta make a vegetable lover out of anybody. Smoky wake, the stir fried shrimp paste give you that funkiness, it's salty, it's very spicy, creeping up on me. I feel like climbing. Honestly, I don't think we could have gotten any luckier. That's the line for it now. We just walked in. We got VIP seating. It must have been destiny to eat there. It was very interesting. The service, boom, so friendly. They were, they were fun to joke with. The funny thing is I think I like the mango salad and that stir fried morning glory more than the actual chicken and rice. It is, like I said, a little bit drier than I was expecting. Doesn't have that gelatinous layer kind of in between the skin and the meat. But if you want something that's not as rich and heavy and kind of coats your mouth, that's a good little spot. That was good, I'm, I'm done babbling. Let's keep moving on, we got more to eat. Now y'all know Malaysia is all about diversity. I mean, Southern Indian, you got Malay, you got the Southern Chinese that migrated here. And when I was looking at that Michelin Guide, I was a little worried about the diversification, but it's all right. We're gonna get some Southern Indian food. Finally, the banana leaf rice here at Sri Nirwana out in Bangsar. Come on, let's go. And it's easy like that. So you actually walk up to the counter here and you order it first, which is hard because I feel like I wanted to see everything is tempting, but then the pressure was on. I didn't know what to do. Really got a few options. Banana leaf white rice or banana leaf chicken biryani, but then you had to be locked in the chicken and I'm just not good with commitment. So I'm sorry. I went white rice. Thank you, boss. All right, so here it goes. We got the banana leaf. They're about to pile it up for us. Hello, sir. How are you? Got the white rice here. I uh, got vegetable. Oh, they actually got the bitter melon. They fried it up. Looks like we got some long beans been chopped up, put into a curry. Can I have lots of these one? Thank you. Is this like chutney? Yes. Okay, it's chutney. Nice. Okay, now we got Chicken the sauces. Curry, cheese curry, dal. Okay. Can I try the dal? Oh, nice. And what else? You have chicken curry? Yeah, let's do all three. And um, this is the fish curry. Perfect. Thank you. One thing I know from all the pictures is just how vibrant this is. I mean. I didn't realize I could get the doll and the fish curry and the chicken curry. So to me, if I can get all three, that's what I want. Thank you. I can use my hands though, right? <laughs> it's okay, no problem. We got the mutton curry. Put that in. Pop it on. 
Awesome. Thanks, boss. Is there wash hands? Inside. Okay. Washing up. I'm gonna get after this. Now for me, I go for the pop it down before it gets soft. Sometimes I even just like to take the pop it on and just, you know, I want to try the curries and everything a little bit first. Oh man. So for me with curry, I kind of always want to go with that mutton out there. I'm going to get with that rice. Oh yeah. I mean, look at that. Think of all the love, the preparation, how much time it takes to make one curry. You got three in here, the mutton, chicken, fish, and the doll, all in this one bite. That mutton is a little drier than I usually like. It's more, a little more like mutton jerky. But when you put that many spices, that much oil that's coating it in that curry and that much spice, I don't mind to sit there and chew a little bit because it's just flavor on flavor on flavor. Oh, I thought these little chilies were gonna be fiery hot. They are salty. Ooh. You know, my cows, we give them a salt block and they just lick it. Feels like I got one of those. Don't ask me how I know what it tastes like. And the beauty is the stuff you just kind of get free with it, right? You get the bitter gourd that's been fried. And that right there is just proof that you can take anything and fry it to make it delicious. Maybe a little money bite right here, a little chutney, mutton curry, and all three in that rice. To me, what's so much fun about banana leaf rice is still kind of feel like you're in control of everything. You're kind of like the chef, like, oh, I want a little more chutney. Maybe I want to get a little vegetable curry in there. I want a little more fish curry with this bite. You can sit here and play with it and get it to your liking. Hmm. Now, I don't know if you were a best bite first person or a best bite last person, but I'm all about that last bite being the best bite. So I got everything saved here that I love. The fried bitter melon, lots of curry, not a single piece of dry rice anywhere Ooh. now i'm no banana leaf rice expert but to me that's on the list for a good reason i just don't know what else i would want it was definitely salty but what else could i possibly have to go with that to make it better i do not know now also i'm not a jerk i folded my leaf when i finished that's the kind thing to do fold your leaf because then people don't have to like touch where you've been eating and stuff they can just grab the backside. That's a rule for you when you come to banana leaf rice restaurants. Woo! Now we got something big planned for the next stop. I just hit somebody's bike. Now, if y'all think we are just food freaks out in the streets, you are wrong. Wherever there's good food, we are freaky with it. We're at Dewan by Chef Juan. He's like the first celebrity chef of Malaysia. I guess you call him like the Julia Childs for Malaysian food. And this here is his restaurant. Somebody has been on TV for decades, written endless amount of cookbooks. Well, I guess we could just call him the one and only. <laughs> uh, that sounded so much better in my head. And we made it. Man, it was a trek up here though. I mean, this has gotta be one of the most vibrant restaurants I've ever been to. I think it matches Chef Juan's personality. I mean, it has colors, it is tropical, but it's also got this purity to it, this white, the chandeliers, kind of feels like a little bit of money. I mean, even the menu, big menus are genius to me because I get lost in it and I always look for the little symbol of a chef's signature. And that's all I ever order. What do you recommend? I'm so lost. Uh, this one is complimented in pay. Oh, nice. What is this one? Crackers. Oh, crackers. Yeah. Coconut crackers or peanut. Recommendation. Yeah, what's your recommendation? This is the most seller food. Okay. This signature, W Mark. All W Mark is most seller food and favorite food. Okay. Okay, cool. Let me do this. We're through the hard part, which is ordering. Now we can just enjoy eating. Got some coconut crackers. Looks like a little econ bilis here and a little peanut. That is perfect for wetting the appetite. Crunchy, salty, a little bit of heat. And nothing gets me more excited than these nuts. Pineapple mojito. Honestly, I'm not usually a mint person, but when you do it with the pineapple, that tangy, that sweet, it's like a nice little treat. Now I'm ready to eat. They got the jar of sauces here. He said you can use them, but you use it, you pay for it. 32, ring it. So careful. Thanks, boss. Wow. I just put the rice here. So this is the chicken liver rice. Inside chicken liver, fried onion, fried egg. Okay. okay. And this one is different type of rice. 
pomegranate plants. Inside pomegranate, beetroot, ginger, lemon grass. Okay, sir. Okay, perfect. You can try both. And rice is unlimited. Unlimited rice. Like okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. And Thanks, boss. Ho, 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 ho. Aye, man, when the rice got that many things in it, you know they're doing it right. Hey. Hey, come here. How does it feel to be all the way across the table? The only social distancing I ever want to be doing with this much food in between us. Yeah, I don't know why I'm the type of person. If you're the Max, do you want to eat some pomelo? No. You want to eat a pomelo salad? Yes. Oh, look at that piece right there. Mouth watering. Something about the sweet, tart burst of juiciness in your mouth. I always get a little bit of bitter with my pomelo as well. And the fried shallots, the crushed peanut. Also then a little bit of a liquid that's got the torch chili and a squeeze of lime for that acidity. Wow. Ooh, ooh, and different types of pomelo. I have no clue which way to go with my rice, right or left, but I'm gonna get that eggplant coated in that sauce. I think I'm gonna go towards the liver one. I just kinda want all that savoriness with this. So this is actually stir-fried in Chef Juan's signature sambal paste. And the thing that comes at me right at the beginning is how just tomato-rich, umami-packed it is. When you get a good tomato, that sweetness, that umami flavor come together, then it's that heat that just kisses and coats the back of your mouth. It's not too much, it's just a nice, subtle burn. And to pair that with an eggplant, we're so creamy, roasted, you get a smokiness, a little bit bitterness from the char. You know what I love about Malaysia? They're like, this is our vegetable dish. Still has massive pieces of prawns in here. And I'm climbing that heat mountain. I mean, it's not like an Everest mountain. It's kind of like one of those casual 14-footer weekends or whatever you hiking people do. And I'm gonna eat my own words. It was better with the beet rice. I thought I was supposed to know stuff about food. Now it's time for this soft shell crab. It also got a green curry sauce that goes with it. And of course, Malaysian people were like, oh, we got a sauce. What can we add to it? Durian? Mm. No. Salted egg yolk? Ah. Salted egg yolk, everything here in Malaysia. For me, it's all about that green curry, that, that little bit of tanginess, that creamy coconutness, the way it mixes and matches with that soft, lump, sweet crab meat. This actually is a little bit of burst as well, like this brininess from the sea that I really appreciate and want. Wow. Definitely incredibly salty bite, especially after having that soft shell crab battered. The one pro of dining alone and being a loser, I can double dip. Worth it? Maybe. And the last piece de resistance. So we got the kambing koozie. Now kambing, we actually got the lamb coming all the way from New Zealand. Thank you pretty much for making the trip out here. I'm sure it's very hard flying first class to this restaurant but then it's actually cooked until sucking and tender in a thick koozie. I think it's just like this thick, creamy sauce you cook it in. We can see some aromatic stuff. I see raisins, I see peanuts, but there's only one way to discover more. I'm definitely feeling the Arabic Middle Eastern vibes with this. Kind of remind me of a pulao, the first bite I took. Maybe it's just because you have rich, a rich meat like lamb mixed with a sweetness coming from these raisins. And then these warming spices, kind of like cardamom, clove, cinnamon, all mixed together and having it with rice, really giving me some Middle Eastern vibes. But the real question is, how does sambal balachin taste with a nice lamb dish? It's a trick question. Sambal balachin makes everything taste better. A flavorful dish, but not the succulent, tender, juicy lamb that I was hoping for that was written on the menu. I will take the blame though. It is a little cold because I've been a little slow reviewing the foods. And of course, no meal is complete without dessert. No spoon. Oh, thank you. On my own. I guess it's meant for sharing. They had to let me know, like, you can take it away. There's no pressure if you don't finish it. Oh, oh. Now it's the Leaning Tower of Chindal. Oh my gosh. I think we just got to destroy it. Okay, I've had a lot of Chindal. Never have I ever had Chindal of ice cream. Oh, got the jellies there as well. 
It's fun. It's the beans, it's the gula, it's the corn, it's the pan and jellies, coconut cream. How could you ever go wrong? Now, is that the right spot for it? I think Bib Gourmand is right where it should be. Doesn't really feel exclusive enough to be a star, but I definitely think if you got the extra room in the wallet, the extra room in the stomach, and a little free time in KL, swing by and try it out for some good Malaysian food. Now, y'all, did the Michelin Guide screw up in KL? Matters how you want to judge. You know, are there things that should be on the list that aren't? Of course. Are there things on the list that shouldn't? Heck yes. But you know what? Sometimes we get so busy with food, arguing and giving our opinion and trying to make lists that we forget. Food brings love and peace to the table. Thank you, Chef Juan, for our wonderful meal. Peace. Catch you at the next one.